Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. Virginia Patterson Hensley, better known to her legions of fans as Patsy Cline, would have been 90 years old on September 8th of this year. She was born in Winchester, Virginia, and it's also the town where she lived the longest out of any other place in her life. When she was younger, her father worked maintenance for a number of different places, uh, including a university in Lexington, Virginia. They bounced around all throughout her youth, finally settling back in Winchester, Virginia. Her mom and dad got a divorce. Patsy was already at this time coming into her own as a singer, uh, appearing on local radio, uh, traveling around, playing uh, dive bars and moose lodges and elk lodges and things of that nature, uh, also while attending school and holding multiple jobs until she received her big break. And the rest is kind of history up until her tragic passing in an airplane crash at the age of 30 years old. I've actually always wanted to go to Winchester, Virginia. It's not too far away from me, maybe about an hour. I've driven by it numerous times. I've had friends that are from Winchester and I think I probably drove through it like once or twice, but I've never stopped in for uh, an extended stay. So the Friday of Labor Day weekend, I found myself with a rare off day and I decided to take advantage of the absolutely gorgeous weather that day and I drove down to Winchester or I drove out west to Winchester through the Appalachian Mountains and then a little north on 81 and then off the exit there in Winchester. I found a local guide online. It's actually on the Winchester's tourism website. There is a Patsy Cline uh, guide that you can take. You can follow. There are several different stops. And the first stop took me to the visitor center and I had a really nice chat uh, with a lady that was in there. And I was informed that there was a whole weekend planned celebration for her birthday. Apparently this is something that happens every year. I had no idea this was to take place and they were especially going all out with her 90th birthday. I was given this form. This is the flyer that was advertising the event. It was the Patsy Cline Historic House Benefit Concert featuring Grand Ole Opry member Mandy Barnett. It looked pretty cool. The event and the show uh, took place at the high school where she attended. In the past, there have been numerous guests to this event, including her late ex-husband, as well as I believe her sister and some other family members. So I'm gonna follow the trail and the first stop, of course, will be the visitor center where there are some items of memorabilia, including the piano that she sat and played at during a live local radio interview that led to her uh, getting discovered outside of the area and becoming the massive star that she did become. And then I did a little additional research while I was there. I got talking to some folks because there was a lot of people in town for this event and I went down another separate rabbit hole and I discovered a couple other different places that are not part of that guidebook. So hopefully uh, we can check these places out together. So let's head on west out to Winchester, Virginia.
All right, we're right around the corner from Patsy Cline's historic home. It's a home she lived in the longest and which she purchased for her mother. We're gonna see if we can get a tour inside the house. Patsy lived here from the ages of 16 to 21 when she married Gerald Klein. Patsy resided here from 1948 to 53, longer than at any other house associated with her in the Winchester and Nashville areas. And she returned to it intermittently until her singing career began in 1957. And we were successful. I paid $8 for this awesome tour. It is highly worth it. So if you're in the area, I definitely recommend you go. You cannot take video inside, but I did take a ton of photos and I'm gonna try from memory to do a voiceover right now. Okay, the living room is the first thing you see when you step into the door. Almost all of the furnishings are period correct, but not actual artifacts. It has a small mid-century kitchen, which was typical of the time period. And it's also been converted to the cashier office. These two chairs, however, are original and once sat on the front porch of the home. It also features an unusually large backyard. We were unable to go back there. More furnishings typical of the 1950s and 60s and a replica of the dress seen in this photo and the boots that she would have worn with the dress. However, Patsy designed most of her own outfits and her and her mother made them. So there were several photocopies of actual sketches along with the notes to her mom. And this serving platter is original. This would have been used in the Hensley family home. To mom, I finally made it. All my love, Patsy. Restoration of the home continues to be ongoing. And in several sections of the house, there are these framed sections of wallpaper. Now, this is the existing wallpaper. Unfortunately, most of it is corrupted, old, falling apart. So the walls in the house have been painted white and they've saved this existing wallpaper where it's possible. Winchester was a major strategic stronghold for both the North and the South during the American Civil War in the 1860s. I was shocked to learn that this house was built in the 1850s, meaning it survived three terrible campaigns here. And this wood is part of the original foundational structure of the house. This is what it originally looked like during the Civil War. There's a steep flight of stairs upstairs to the one bedroom that Patsy shared with her mom, her sister, and her brother. Pretty crowded. The home now has several new exhibits, including this outfit. And the guide told us that despite the appearance of Patsy in photos, where sometimes she looks larger, she actually was a very, very small frame, tiny woman with a very thin waist size. She was also known to be a collector of items of clothing that she liked, meaning that she would often own several articles of the same thing. For example, these boots, this is the same brand as the one that she's wearing on the album cover. However, on the album cover, they are flats and these boots in the display are heeled, but it's reported she owns somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 pairs of these boots. This cowgirl hat is signed on the inside and it's also featured in this photo here. Now this is probably the most noteworthy part of their new display collection. This camera here is an Argo Flex and it's the exact same camera that was used to take this photo. What makes this a memorable camera is that this photo was taken the night before she was killed in the plane crash. This is to be the last known photo taken of her while she was alive. So let's see what other kind of locations we can drum up while I'm here in Winchester and what a beautiful day it is. One of the hardest things about doing these types of videos is confirming locations. This is the former site of Wink, which is the radio station. It's Winchester's oldest radio station and it's where Patsy Cline got her radio station debut. She performed here numerous times. They played her records numerous times. 
I believe it's an abandoned building now. This company has been bought and sold several times. It is, however, still in operation as adult contemporary, which I believe is religious music. I pulled up to this location and I did not realize that it was an empty building. So let's just check it out real quick. This is pretty cool from an urban explorer's perspective, but I'm assuming these are the mass points where the antennas used to stand. The radio tower, which was erected in 1941, was dismantled in 2021. Now disassembled, the remains of the tower is in a scrapyard. Reportedly, the 14-year-old country music singer Virginia Jenny Hensley, who later became Patsy Cline, began her career by making her broadcast debut on WINC in 1948. Hensley asked disc jockey Jimmy McCoy if she could appear on his show. She was an immediate success continue to perform regularly on Saturday mornings, leading to her getting booked at local nightclubs and then eventually vaulting to national stardom. In the late 40s, entertainers Bing Crosby and Bob Hope both visited the station and were interviewed on air. If this is in fact the location where she performed, I really hope that when they go to rezone this or when they go to develop it, that they turn it into some sort of cultural center or there is something on the premises that denotes the stature that this building held. All right, we just pulled up to Hanley High School. This is the school where Patsy Cline attended and struggled to maintain her education. Obviously, education was not her passion. Music was, and if I'm not mistaken, Patsy actually dropped out of here to pursue her music career full time, and the world is appreciative of the fact that she did so. But this school is gorgeous. Uh, I'll try to get some exterior shots of these buildings and the stadium, the Hanley Bowl, is really cool. All right, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm an artist, but I am not a musician. Well, we are right outside the G&M Music Store, which has historical significance because Patsy Cline recorded here. Uh, this store was originally built in 1937, and it's still here. Start connection, so That's cool. people that don't have a clue know sort of what it's all about. What kind of instrument did she play? Okay, so the location we were just at is not the original location for GNM Music. I got talking to the owners who were really awesome people. The Gaines family are in their third generation of ownership of the music store. In fact, the owner's father was the one who sold the first guitar to Patsy Cline. Unfortunately, there's not a record of what guitar that actually was, but they informed me that 38 Boscawan, which is the building right here behind me, was the original location for their music store. It'd be really awesome to know what type, what brand guitar she bought from this location. But this was the store. Again, they've been in operation since 1937. So Mr. Gaines told me that he grew up basically in this building and they shared an alleyway with the Greyhound bus terminal. In the story, he told me that this alleyway the buses would pull through and they would never shut off. So the exhaust smoke in here was terrible and they would actually have to run fans out the window pushing <laughs> pushing those exhaust fumes out. You're not gonna find this in any of the guidebooks or anything online because I couldn't until I asked uh, the Gaineses. This was a location where Patsy Klein also worked as a waitress in this bus depot. It's now a children's learning center, but this was the site of the former Greyhound bus depot. Mr. Gaines also told me that stucco has been wrapped around here covering the existing structure, which was a lot more art deco uh, back in the day, which was the style of Greyhound bus depots in the US at that time. So the buses would pull through here, sit, rev their engines, and the passengers would wait and come and board their buses. 
You can see all of the cool architectural details are actually still here. I'm across the street now from the former site of Gaunt's drugstore. It was this building right here. And we're about two tenths of a mile from Patsy Klein's house. This is where Patsy worked as a teenager, as a soda jerk for the Gaunt family. They loved Patsy and they were very supportive of her burgeoning music career. And so they let her off frequently so she could go off to auditions and perform in different competitions and perform in the evenings. The one time that I drove through Winchester before today, there was a window display that had a ton of memorabilia dedicated to Patsy Cline. That apparently is no longer the case. I'm gonna go across the street, but it has been completely redesigned. So the only thing that's original to the site now is the actual structure of the building. The interior, of course, has been entirely gutted. We're about half a block away from Gaunt's Drugstore and this is the site of the old Triangle Diner. Unfortunately, I believe it's out of business now. Uh, there are plans to redevelop this site, hopefully as a restaurant. This is where Patsy Klein worked for three years after she dropped out of high school to support her mom and her siblings. I hope they can find a way to reopen this because this is such an incredibly cool streamlined diner. There are very, very few of these left in the country. Right behind me here in this building, which is now a Samson Properties real estate office, was the site of the old Winchester Star, Winchester's Daily Newspaper. And this is where Charlie Dick worked, Patsy Cline's second husband, and would remain her husband throughout her the rest of her life. This is where he worked when she met him. And two doors down from the house that Patsy Klein lived in is 720. And this is the home where she married her second husband. Charlie Dick married Patsy Klein in Winchester on September 15th, 1957. After their marriage, they moved to Fayetteville, North Carolina, where Dick was working as a linotype operator at Fort Bragg, the military base. They moved back to Winchester in 59 and remained married until 1963 when Clyde died in that crash. There's a vacant lot right next to her home and it looks like they're building some sort of Patsy Cline like walking trail. There's a Patsy Cline sign right there. And maybe it's gonna be some sort of outdoor uh, just trail.
So no tour of Patsy Cline's Winchester would be complete if we didn't make a trip to the cemetery to pay her a visit. Of course, she tragically passed away in a plane crash at the mere age of 30. She had just completed what would be the equivalent of her rookie contract, her rookie record deal, and she was poised to make a lot of money with whoever she signed with next. There are many people that theorize that she could have been way bigger than even Dolly Parton should she have lived uh, to a ripe old age. Her final resting place here is just outside of Winchester. This is Shenandoah Memorial Park. She has two different locations. One is a bell tower that was erected in her honor uh, in 1980. A lot of people think this is actually a grave site. It is not. And I was actually directing a couple other folks to the actual cemetery where she's located. I had a little bit of a time trying to find it, but it is right behind the building that I'm standing in right now. This is the funeral home. Death cannot kill what never dies. Love, Dick. Okay guys, welcome back. What did you think of that little tour? I thought it was a super fun time. One of the locations I did not go to, which is just across the border in West Virginia, is one of the famous roadhouses that she played and was also the real life location that was featured in the Jessica Lang 1980s TV movie. It's a really great movie. Uh, I think I watched it on YouTube. You can find it out there. Uh, it gives you a lot more detail about her life and brings this super energetic, boisterous, outgoing, awesome lady uh, into more of a, uh, you can you can get a better sense of who she actually might have been. So anyway guys, if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, if you would like to see what I'm up to next, please hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment, let me know if there's anything I missed or if you can fill in some of the gaps. I am not a Patsy Cline historian, I'm just a fan of her music. And thanks for watching guys, I will catch you on the next one.